Good morning, and thank you for being with us this morning. We have um, Lisa Marlowe, who is a professor at SFSU, um, with some of her students here to uh, present on maintaining our health during the COVID-19 shelter in place. And um, today we're gonna hear from, uh, from the students about different resources and um, different things that we can do to maintain our health. So um, Lisa, is there anything that you would like to say? You can unmute yourself if there is. All right, we'll have her jump in at any point, but um, so I'd like to first introduce Kayla to start us off this morning. Oh, actually, um, we mm -hmm. kind of created oh. an outline, so okay. um, I can start the presentation okay. for us. Go for it. All right. So hello, everyone from Skyline College. Um, my name is Christina, and I'm here today with my nursing classmates to give a presentation to you all. Our names are Avery, Alana, Puti, Beatrice, Wayne, and Kayla. So we are nursing students from San Francisco State University in our last semester of nursing school, just about to graduate. Uh, today, we will be sharing a lot of resources that we think may be valuable to you all during this time of sheltering in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19. So we are all super excited to be here and thank you again, Skyline, for this amazing opportunity. So Avery will actually start us off with a summary on COVID-19 and update us on what the research is currently saying, followed by mental health resources presented by Alana and then so forth. Um, so we hope you all enjoy our presentation. Also, a PDF of all of the resources will be available for students to refer back to at a later time as well. Hi, I'm Avery. Um, so I'm just going to be talking a little bit about the basics of COVID-19. I'm sure you've heard a lot about it. Um, and before I say anything, I do want to give a little bit of a disclaimer and just say that you know, the, this is a new virus and um, we're learning a lot about it constantly. So um, things change, information changes, and I am not an expert on the disease. I'm not researching it. Um, so just a disclaimer. But um, what we know so far, and I think what's really important to know um, is how it spreads because um, as you go out into the community to, you know, do your essential tasks, go to the grocery store, the pharmacy, or whatever, um, you, it's something that's on your mind. Um, so what we know is that it spreads through what's called respiratory droplets. And basically that's your saliva and your mucus. Um, so anytime that someone coughs or sneezes or spits, that um, fluid is, you know, projected out of their body and contains particles of the virus. Um, and so that's important. And that's why, um, you know, the six feet apart is mandated because um, respiratory droplets can, can um, act during a sneeze or cough, go about six feet from someone's body. Um, but then you also have to consider that they can land on things like railings or door handles or you know just any surfaces in in the area where the person sneezed or coughed um, so then you also have to think about you know keeping your hands to yourself um, not touching things as much because you can um, you can get the virus from touching something that was sneezed on you know an hour ago and then you touch your face and then the virus now is you know on your person um, and so um, and so that too is also why the, the, the masks are mandated now by law, that if you're going out into public, you have to wear a mask. And I think that was enacted on Wednesday um, in the state of California. Um, and so that's not just to protect you from other people, but it's to protect other people from your respiratory droplets because the mask will catch anything um, that comes out of your mouth. Um, and then, of course, you know, something that's been talked about by everyone just for prote in, in regards to protecting yourself is um, keeping your hands washed or using hand sanitizer anytime 
you go out into public and come back home or anytime you come from even from a store into your car it's good to you know use some hand sanitizer before you get into your car and touch everything in your car too um and and just in general keeping your hands to yourself not you know touching things as much as possible um and then especially not touching your face too um and then being aware of symptoms like shortness of breath cough fever um in regards to yourself and then also um just watching out for that in in your own homes and with the people you're quarantined with um if you are feeling like you're showing symptoms it's really important that you call the doctor first or call your urgent care first um before actually going into the office because um because if there are it, it protects you and it protects others if you are you know um if you do have the virus then it protects others because when you go into that space of the urgent care or the emergency room you're potentially putting others at risk um and then it also protects you because there are others who may be positive for covid um in the er or in the um in the urgent care and that puts you at risk for contracting it. So just calling beforehand, making sure you're taking the precautions. Um, and then just to give kind of like a, an overall of where we're at right now in terms of cases, um, nationwide we're at 800, 802,000 cases and roughly 44,000 deaths. So this is pretty serious, it's happening it's real and we need to stay home and protect ourselves and protect others super important all right next up is kayla um so it's actually going to be um, oh. me. um my name is alana i'm going to be talking about miscellaneous resources as well as mental health so with the covid19 outbreak this brings a lot of stress to people and stress could look different um, for everybody. It could entail difficulty sleeping or concentrating, change in sleeping patterns, change in eating patterns. It can worsen um, chronic health conditions or mental health conditions. So these are some of the things that I'm going to be looking at today. So the first resource is 211. Um, and this is if you need any assistance finding food, paying house bills or any other essential services. Um, you can type 211 into the internet and um, use it that way, or you can dial 211 on your phone. And there are people that will be connecting you to um, resources like food and disaster assistance. So that is a super um, awesome new thing that we have here in the Bay Area. Um, the next thing is that the Alcoholics Anonymous um, is continuing their meetings. However, they're moving on to the Zoom platform, which is awesome. And the link is provided right there. They have meetings pretty much every day at different times of the day. So just being able to hop on a meeting that um, fits your schedule and um, is able to work with you. I think that's an amazing resource that we have here in the San Mateo County. So jumping into some of the mental health resources. I'm just gonna to be touching on each of these links. Um, so the first resource we have is Eventbrite, and this is a mindfulness and meditation um, talk with some of the leaders in the field. And it happens every weekday in April, starting at 11 a.m. It is a live stream, and you get a talk from, I believe it's John Kabat, um, this week. So those are really awesome to tune into as live streams. The next app is Headspace. Uh, it is available as a website and also as a phone application. Um, there's a free version available of this app and there's also one um, where you could pay. It's like an extended one. Um, it's $12.99 a month or $69.99 annual fee and the link is provided right there. The next one I wanted to touch on is Tara Brack's website, um, and this is used for mental health and medication resources. Um, the link is down below, and there are different archived and ongoing live stream talks as well. Um, she talks about different topics, including compassion, 
um, resilience, worry, kind of just big mental health um, issues. And she talks about strategies um, to overcome these. Um, the next link I would like to talk about is the Center for Healthy Minds from the University of Wisconsin. This focuses on mindfulness and overall well-being. Um, it has, as well, live stream meditations, and there is a website as well as an app provided. And one of the cool features of this one is that it incorporates parent and child routines, which is very relevant right now because a lot of kids are home from school and um, they are stressed out as well as parents are stressed out and routines are all all over the place so this is a good app um, to find some structure and routine uh, some phone applications that i'd like to go over is uh, breathe to relax this is a meditation and calmness application this one is free um, the link is below and these are different breathing exercises that help you relax. They come at different time increments, like if you only have one minute or if you want two minutes or so on and so forth. The next application is called Balance. Um, this is a new one and it is offering a free one year subscription during this time. Um, what you would do is download the app and then email access at balanceapp.com for instructions on the year of free trial. Um, so that one is really awesome. And there's also San Velo, which is my personal favorite one. Um, when you open the San Velo app, you essentially write what your mood is or you search your mood and it gives you different activities based on what your mood is. For example, if you're stressed out, there's different art activities, different breathing um, resources on the app, or if you're currently feeling overwhelmed, anxious, angry, it has all of those um, as well. And the last one I wanted to talk about is the Calm application. It's a seven day free trial. Um, unfortunately, it's a short one and it would be $16.99 annually. And the reason that we are focusing so much on mental health is we are all trying to find a new routine among um, during this time and it is often hard. And just being able to focus on ourselves and being able to get through this time um, is really essential for our mental health and not just ignoring um, problems that we are seeing coming up or things that are surfacing. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Puti. Hi, my name is Puti and today I'm going to talk about physical activity and health. So physical activity includes all forms of active recreation, like sports participa participation, cycling, and walking, as well as activities you do at work and around the house and garden. But during this COVID-19 pandemic, when so many of us are very restricted in our movements, it's even more important for people of all ages and abilities to be active, um, as active as possible. Even a short break from sitting by doing three to five minutes of physical movement, such as walking or stretching, will help ease muscle strain, relieve mental tension, and improve blood circulation and muscle activity. And regular physical activity can also help to give the day a routine and to be a way of staying in contact with friends and family. Regular physical activity benefits both the body and the mind. It can reduce high blood pressure, help ma manage weight, and reduce the risk of heart disease such as stroke, type 2 diabetes, and various cancers. It can also improve um, bone and muscle strength and increases balance, flexibility, and fitness. So the recommended amount of time to exercise for adults over um, 18 years old are at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activities throughout the week. So such as brisk walking, dancing, gardening, and doing housework, or at least 75 minutes of vigorous intensity physical activities throughout the week, such as running, fast cycling, fast swimming, and carrying out heavy loads. So here we found some resources to help us stay active and healthy during COVID-19. The first one um, is a yoga instructor, Mandy. She provides free live online classes during COVID-19, and she has daily 30-minute sessions for fitness and yoga via Zoom. 
if you like to burn some calories and fat, um, HIIT workout, which stands for high intensity interval training, may be your best choice. There are plenty free HIIT workouts on YouTube and they're usually very short, like less than 30 minutes. And if you're into dancing, check out this YouTube channel called 305 Fitness, which provides a lot of fan fun dance and cardio classes and there are also some um, zoom cl dance classes like this dance mission theater they offer online zoom classes from nine to sixteen dollars per um, class and if you're obsessed with blackpink or bts like me it's the best time to learn some k-pop dances check out the k-pop dance tutorials on youtube another thing is that nike now offers free premium membership with in, which includes workouts, um, nutrition tips, and wellness guidance to serve every kind of athlete. And if you wanna go hiking, breathe in some fresh air, check out um, alltrail.com for more information and also use the link to check out um, closed park and trails because some are affected by COVID-19 and they might be closed. But um, don't forget to keep social distance from other hikers, which is six feet when you go hiking. Um, San Mateo Athletic Club offers more than 40 classes per week for free, and they're suitable for all levels, no equipment needed, very convenient. Touchstone Climbing offers various visual exercise classes. You can check out their website for the class schedule and description. Last but not least, um, SF Awaken Mind offers free Zoom classes from Monday to Friday to practice Buddhist meditation and spirituality. So being active during COVID-19 pandemic is challenging for us all because the opportunities to be physically active seem to be more restricted. It's even more important to plan in every day the ways to be active and to reduce the time spent sitting for long periods. So put simply, it's a critical time to ensure that we all move more and sit, light, sit less. So next I'm gonna hand it to Christina to introduce you some um, entertainment. Hi, hello again, my name is Christina. Um, now I will be presenting resources to keep you and your loved ones entertained at home. Uh, we have resources for kids, sports fans, musicians, artists, theater fans, and more. Um, hopefully some of these will be of interest to you. So for the remainder of April, HBO shows and documentaries will be free. All you have to do is head on over to HBO Go or HBO Now or On Demand to watch every episode of a series that you're interested in, documentaries or even movies. Um, no subscription required at all. Amazon is offering free children's TV shows, no matter if you have Amazon Prime or not. So this is great for those with kids. For the sports fans, until May 31st, the NFL is offering complimentary access to NFL Game Pass, which provides fans the opportunity to relive incredible NFL games and moments from past seasons. So the Game Pass offers an extensive library of football programming for fans. Now for the theater fans, the National Theater is streaming a production each week on Thursday. All you have to do is go on the website um, using the link we've provided and click on the YouTube link. Uh, so usually streams around 7 p.m. They are doing a showing tonight, uh, this week, April, week of April 23rd. Um, they are streaming Shakespeare's and it is a live full performance. So this is great for those who are interested. Um, we also have a resource for beginner guitar lessons on YouTube. Lessons will be provided by Marty Music, which is a musician and YouTuber with over 2 million subscribers. Until April 26, which is coming up, uh, the Metropolitan Opera is also offering nightly opera streams if you're interested in opera. Now, if you're stuck at home, there are 12 famous museums offering virtual tours that you can take on your couch. So you can experience the best museums from London to Seoul in the comfort of your own home. Now, lastly, UC Berkeley art instructors are offering free art classes via Zoom for everyone. So there are specific dates that you can sign up for on their website, and they also have pre-recorded videos that you can watch anytime. Now, if 
if all of these are not enough for you, um, Kayla will now present online gaming with friends. Thank you, Christina. Uh, so we found a couple of resources uh, for online gaming. Growing up, you might have played a couple of board games like the classics, Monopoly, uh, Clue. Uno is still a favorite of mine. And luckily, during COVID and any time really, even when this is all over, you can play them online. So like I said, uh, Monopoly is available. Um, it, it, it does cost $3.99 as well as Clue. You can get them on Apple and you can get them on Google. So they're available for almost anybody with a smartphone. Also, uh, Uno is available on uh, online. Uh, Mario Kart Tour is a very, very popular app um, where you can play back, play back the Nintendo classic Mario Kart, but instead it's on your phone. And you can play online with multiple different people or compare your scores with, um, with your friends. Cards Against Humanity is, uh, is a pretty fun and almost ridiculous game, but it is uh, quite fun to play with your friends. Um, I played it yesterday with my cousin just to see how exactly it worked, and it's just as fun as if you're playing it at a party uh, with uh, your friends in person. Uh, other games that are available would be Wheel of Fortune. I personally grew up watching this with my uh, grandma. So it was, it's always pretty fun uh, to guess and play and feel like you're on the, on the show. And uh, Words with Friends is basically the online version of Scrabble, uh, which is also fun. It, helps, it can help you build your vocabulary and figure out new words while also having fun with your friends and comparing. Um, this one is not on the resource. We can definitely add it. My sister recently told me about Game Pigeon which is an app that you would download on your Apple phone. And it also has um, like kind of generic versions of games like pool. It also has like Uno and like solitaire and card games that you can play and you just link it up onto your phone so you can play with, with your friends. Um, so that's all I have for now. And I hope that these are useful for you um, during this uh, coronavirus crisis. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Beatrice for activities for your children. Hi everyone, I'm Beatrice. <clears throat> so we put together some links with ideas for activities for kids. Um, so for those who have kids, it can be a little bit challenging to keep them busy and entertained when we are trying to work or trying to attend our online classes. So we put together these resources to help out with the little ones. Um, some of them are educational. It offers like support for schoolwork. And some of them are, mo are more like arts and crafts and projects that don't require a lot of screen time. Because it's always a good idea to watch out how much screen time the kids are getting um, while they are home. So this first link is for parade.com. It has 125 ideas for arts and crafts. Um, it shows how to set up like treasure hunts, how to make forts using cardboard. And also it has different recipes to make homemade um, Play-Doh. Uh, the second link is Red Rover. It teaches the kids how to train their dogs. So the kids can spend time like teaching their dogs how to sit, how to roll over. Um, it also has some projects that use recyclable materials. We are going to talk about this website later because it has really useful resources for the pets in general. The next link offers school supports for kids. It's from pre-K to fifth grade. Um, and during this time, they are offering free access to premium features while the schools are closed. Um, <clears throat> Audible.com is also offering free ebooks for kids during the school's closure. So it's worth to check it out. The next one is Breakout EDU. Um, it's for school content learning, um, but the videos are really fun and entertainment. You, you can interact with the videos and it doesn't feel like learning. It feels like having fun. It is from K to 12. 
This next one is my favorite. It teaches the kids how to make origami, um, spruce.com. And it, it is a hit at my house right now. So the kids like, they work hard to make their origami and then they get excited to play with them and test the little boats and airplanes. So this is one of my favorites. The next link, uh, the children can check out the real surface of Mars. It's recorded by a NASA Curiosity robot. And it's really cool. It's like a 360 experience. So you can turn around and explore Mars. Um, and the last link is full of projects and more like hands-on activities that will keep the kids engaged in reading and thinking. So what I like this one is this one is like about they learn while they're playing. And these are all suggestions to keeping your kids busy and engaging uh, in healthy developing during these stressful times. And now we're gonna have Avery with really cool suggestions for cooking during the quarantine. Hi. So I will be talking about cooking. I know for me, cooking is like super therapeutic. It's very just like calming. You can get out of, you can forget about all the things you have to do, all your responsibilities, anything that's stressing you out and just focus on, you know, enjoying making a nice meal or a dessert or something that you can, you know, dig into once you're done. Um, but uh, so, I'm first gonna start with this article from the New York Times, um, the Our Best Recipes and Tips for Quarantine Cooking. I like this one a lot because um, it's specifically catered toward uh, cooking during quarantine. Um, typically too, this article is only viewable from, um, it's only view viewable if you have a subscription to the New York Times. And right now they've actually opened it up to everybody. Um, so take advantage of it while it, while it's open. Um, but this this article provides actually a bunch of links within it um, that that have like lists of recipes to cook with your kids, or lists of recipes for for slow cookers, or um, let's see what else I had, uh, or or ways to even just like mix up your lunch and make it a little bit more exciting because I know those are like you know. You're gonna have to make dinner. Slow cookers are great um, options for that during the quarantine and cooking with your kids is another way to keep them occupied. Um, but also it, also it has two, um, a bunch of tips for like ingredient substitutes. I know not everyone has the convenience of being able to go out and grocery shop whenever right now during the quarantine. So having, um, you know, some common substitutes is really helpful. I found it helpful the other day I was making cornbread and I needed buttermilk and I found a substitute for, for buttermilk and that was that was great. It made some pretty good cornbread. Um, and then also it just has some super simple step-by-step -step, um, recipes for beginners because I know a lot of us during quarantine are trying our hand at, at, at cooking for the first time. Um, we also have some some websites like all recipes listed here and that just contains like thousands of, of recipes that are really great. Um, and also Tasty has a ton of recipes. Um, Tasty is really cool because it typically has a video that goes along with the written out recipe, which is helpful for me and any other visual learners or cookers. Um, and then kind of jumping off that, we have a bunch of cooking tutorial um, videos. Uh, so Bon Appetit Test Kitchen has tons of you know, cooking tricks and tips in addition to cooking um, just recipes, like recipes that are videotaped and then links to their website. But then they also put out a playlist of uh, videos that are specific to quarantine cooking. Um, each of the chefs are, are filming from their own home and they're cooking super simple things that you know don't take a lot of ingredients that you can do right now in your home without needing to run to the store or buy a bunch of equipment off of Amazon for they things like they made a video on, um, you know, making a cup of coffee 20 different ways, or their, I think their most recent one was called um, making pantry pasta. And it was just like, they went through their pantry, picked out random things that they had and made, you know, a pasta sauce. Um, and they did that a bunch of different ways. So it's super simple, super, super doable, which I think is super important. 
super. <laughs> um, and then the next one is Super Cook. <laughs> it's a it's an app where you can kind of go through um, all the things that you have, the ingredients that you have in your house at the moment, um, and plug it into this app. And then what it does is it generates a bunch of recipes that has all of the ingredients um, or uses the ingredients that you have on hand. So you don't have to go looking for a recipe that you do have the ingredients for. It does that work for you, which is super convenient. Um, and then also some videos from world-renowned chef uh, Massimo Batura. I'm not sure if I said that right, but um, he cooks a little more fancy, a little more skilled. So sometimes, for, personally, I just like to watch his videos. Those are cool. Um, but it, that's a link to his Instagram. He posts his videos on his Instagram account. Um, also, we have uh, a tutorial for making milk tea. And then uh, if you want to jump on that whipped frothy coffee trend, um, this is a, a tutorial on YouTube of how to make frothy coffee. So next up is Wayne, and he's going to talk about food resources, which may be helpful if you're going to cook during quarantine. Hello, everyone. So my name is Wayne. So today I'll be discussing, I'll be talking about some resources for food available to you in the Bay Area. Um, so first, uh, we provided a link to a food map mm -hmm. in the Bay Area mm -hmm. for students. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID-19, schools have been canceled for students for the remainder of the academic year. So there, uh, there are many. Um, so there were many um, that relied on many students that relied on school for at least two meals a day. Uh, so this map provides you with a list of locations in the Bay Area that provides free meals to students. It gives you the dates and times that they are open, and this may be a good resource uh, for you uh, if you have any children or any family members or friends that may need uh, these services. So um, next, um, we have the San Mateo County, um, the health plan of San Mateo County. So they have a webpage dedicated to the community regarding the food resources. Uh, the page provides information about local food banks. It also provides additional information for free meals for students in the San Mateo County. Um, so if you don't have a way to get around or you prefer not to use public tra transportation, Uber Eats is offering a way to get food. Uh, they're waiving delivery fees for all independently owned uh, restaurants and uh, also have uh, an option for contact-free uh, delivery. Uh, that way you can maintain your social distancing. Um, they also have a pretty, uh, they have pretty cool deals for frontliners. So they're offering free meals for fr uh, first responders on Uber uh, Eats. And they're also um, providing free services for healthcare workers, such as uh, going to and from patient homes and providing um, and between uh, healthcare facilities. Uh, Chipotle is also um, providing um, free delivery for the rest of April. So you can go to their website or you can use, uh, uh, you can order through their mobile app. Uh, you just need a minimum of $10 and then you can um, uh, get some Chipotle. Um, Krispy Kreme is another company that's accommodating people due to um, COVID-19. So right now they're offering a, a buy one, get one free deal on Saturdays and it's limit one per customer. So if you buy one dozen of um, original glazed donuts, you'll get one free. And um, on Mondays, they're actually offering a free dozen um, dozen of original glazed donuts for healthcare workers. And there's no purchase necessary. So all you need to do is um, show them your, um, your work ID and then you'll get a free dozen of donuts. And that, I believe that lasts until um, May, May um, mid-May, um, once when Nurses Week comes up. So that's when the deal will last up until. Um, also, um, a great resource is CalFresh, and uh, CalFresh provides a way for people to purchase groceries. It's the state's food stamp program, and, and we provided a link for the application. So the web page states that it's pretty quick and it's simple and should not take more than 10 minutes to apply. And if, you, uh, if approved, money will be received within 30 days via an EBT card. And what's cool is that you can use this uh, card at most grocery stores, such as Safeway and Trader Joe's. You can also use it at your local farmer's market, and it's used uh, to buy groceries. So 
next I will be talking about um, uh, financial resources and emergency services that are available to San Mateo County residents. Uh, the first one is an emergency fund um, funding for San Mateo Community College uh, di uh, College District students. So there's a link that we provided on the flyer that sends you to the application portal. Uh, it's a uh, it's a scholarship that ranges between five hundred to two thousand dollars, and it is available for students who are unable to meet immediate essential expenses due to uh, because of the hard hardships related to COVID nineteen. So to be eligible, um, students must be enrolled in at least nine units. They have to have a GPA of 2.0 or higher, and they must have a 2019-2020 FAFSA or California Dream Act application on file. So, um, and for those people who were, became unemployed due to COVID-19, you're eligible to receive uh, unemployment benefits. So we provided a link that answers many that has uh, answers many frequently asked questions, and provides you with instructions on how to apply. Currently, uh, also, um, I read that currently the state is um, offering an extra six hundred dollars uh, as like an emergency pay for uh, due to COVID nineteen. So, um, you know, if you or if you have someone that's been affected and is unemployed due to COVID nineteen. Um, make sure you let them know to go to the uh, EDD uh, website and just um, apply for unemployment benefits. So uh, next, uh, there's a uh, there there is a San Mateo County Core Service Agencies. Um, so this agency works closely with the Human uh, Service Agent uh, Human Services Agency in of San Mateo County to provide you with you and your family with basic emergency and support services to stabilize your living situation. Um, uh, the core services uh, agency provides crisis intervention and referrals based on evaluation of your, of your needs and qualifications for assistance. Uh, the core services agencies uh, also provide information about housing resources and function as the access point for coordinated entry uh, into homeless services for residents of San Mateo County. Some resources they may that may benefit you due to COVID uh, are the food programs, housing programs, rent and mortgage assistance, and utility bill assistance. Uh, they have many locations in the Bay Area, and the one that's closest to the students of Skyline College uh, is in San Bruno. And it's at the YMCA uh, Community Resource Center. And we also provided a uh, phone number uh, that you can uh, use if you have any, con uh, if you uh, will wish to contact them. The phone number is 650 276 4101. And uh, lastly, we uh, listed a few more resources that can benefit you all. Uh, we provided links about protection, uh, about protection for consumers such as utility bills. Um, there are assistant program, assistance programs that are available to those who uh, need assistance with paying a utility bill. There's also links regarding in internet access. So some students may have relied heavily on uh, going to school for internet access. Right now there are companies like at t and Comcast that are doing their part in helping people stay connected. So, uh, they have low, non, uh, no commitment plans that people can take advantage of. For example, at t is providing services with no installation fees, no deposit necessary, and no contracts. Uh, they also have no late fees and no termination, uh, termination uh, regardless of being able to pay. So they will provide an in-home modem, and they also have Wi-Fi hotspots as well, too. And Comcast is also is offering uh, free internet services for 60 days. They have free hotspots and no disconnection or late fees as well too. Uh, so uh, we also provided links in regards to eviction uh, regulations. So Governor Newsom issued an emergency order that prevents tenants from uh, being evicted due to COVID-19. We also provided a link to um, covered California as well too for those who lost your jobs and don't have insurance, uh, health insurance anymore. So you can apply for health insurance on the website at coveredcalifornia.com. And we also provided additional links uh, 
uh, regarding tenant protections as well too. So next we have Avery that will discuss some uh, resources and information about pet care. Hi everyone. All right, so um, I'm gonna talk about pet or veterinary resources. Um, the main resource I found that pretty much covered everything was this website called redrover.org. Um, and actually before I get, I get into it, uh, I do want a disclaimer that the CDC has not received any port reports of um, pets becoming sick with COVID-19. Um, and among the greater scientific community, it is agreed upon that they are not, pets are not contributing to the spread of COVID-19. So they're not spreading it to humans. They're not, you know, they're not in that, in that cycle. And I think that's just, you know, on a lot of people's minds um, for pet owners. So I wanted to clear that up. Um, but in terms of resources, they actually have a lot of grants um, that are super helpful in emergency situations. Um, one of the grants they have is for emergency veterinary care for those who become hospitalized due to COVID-19. Um, so if you don't you know, know where your pet would go if you were to go to the hospital um, because you contracted the virus, then the, this organization, you can apply to their grant online and they will, um, they will help um, get emergency boarding for that, for your pet. Um, and then they also have um, an emergency boarding grant for um, those who are facing um, domestic violence within their home um, due to the virus and due to the quarantine. You know, they recognize that there has been an increase um, in domestic violence or at least an increased risk because, you know, um, you may be at home and don't have options to, to leave. Um, and so if that is an unsafe environment, they want to give you the opportunity to leave your home and still know that your pet um, will be cared for and your pet can leave the home as well. And so that both you and your pet are safe and you don't have to worry about any finances or anything like that. They have the grant for temporary boarding for um, those in that, in that situation. Um, and then there's also just a, a grant for er, uh, emergent um, veterinary visits because they do recognize that during this time, it's a financially unstable time for a lot of people. And, and it, it may be hard, you know, for an unexpected emergency visit to the vet can be really expensive. And so they want to make sure that during this time, they're helping people out. So that's there too. Um, and then kind of more simple, simple resources is that on the, on the article, there's a link to another article that has tons of national and regional resources um, for pet food assistance programs. That's super important, getting your pet fed right now, um, especially during a, you know, a financially unstable time for a lot of us, um, can be difficult. Um, and then also they have a great PDF that helps you just think through everything you would need for your pet in an emergency situation. They think, you know, they help you kind of just be prepared and plan ahead for things like if you do get um, hospitalized for COVID, where would you, where would you board um, your pet to? Have you reached out to a friend? Do you know someone that could take them for free or for a couple of days or something like that? Um, thinking through things like, you know, have you, does your pet have identification? Do they have all their vaccinations printed out and ready to go um, just in case? Um, and then, you know, what would you include in like maybe a emergency supply kit for your pet, some food, their meds, some water, things like that. So I think that's super helpful and just being prepared in this time where we've kind of, um, there's been a lot of unpreparedness and there's a lot of uncertainty in what the future holds. So being prepared never hurts. All right, next up is Kayla with some educational resources. Hi again. Um, so lastly, again, we will be going over some educational resources. Uh, we've tried to put as many that are uh, free because it is such an eco uh, economical uh, 
issue that's happening with coronavirus. So the first one that we put here was Khan Academy. Uh, this is an uh, application. It's also a website that you can use for multiple educational resources. Uh, I personally use it a lot for nursing. I take a lot of the practice NCLEX tests, or if I don't understand something, I, um, I like to watch videos that will help me learn. And this isn't just for nursing. It can be for mathematics. Um, it can be for sciences. It has history available. So there's a lot of different um, uh, videos for you to be able to use and it's also available on your phone so there is a little app so if you are on the go you can have it available for you um, also uh, we put a couple of language resources here uh, the first one is duolingo i have been using it for years uh, it is a free application available on the phone and website uh, you can learn as many, many languages such as like Russian, German, uh, Spanish. I personally use it for Spanish. Um, so it is free. There is a paid version for it um, to, you know, get rid of the ads. But if ads don't bother you, just get the free version. Another supplement to Duolingo would be Drops. Uh, it's only five minutes a day, which doesn't seem like a lot, but as far as uh, learning word recognition and just practicing a few minutes a day, uh, it is good, especially if you are, you know, taking a, a language course or if you are using Duolingo, it gives you that additional help. Um, other than that, it would be $9.99 a month or $159.99 for a lifetime subscription. Um, but if you're okay with the five minutes, I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, I'd also like to mention a couple of uh, Ivy League courses that are providing uh, free online courses. Uh, the first website we have is classcentral.com. So a couple of Ivy Leagues like Princeton and Yale, Columbia, they are providing some free online coursework. Um, there are many uh, classes I've looked through it and some of them when you click them it's not free um, the way to get past that is just typing in free courses and then like a couple hundred to a thousand I believe will pop up and it can range from like engineering uh, language development math sciences uh, there's so many different courses available uh, we also put here that there is the uh, San Mateo County Library Although the libraries are closed, uh, there are ebooks and e audiobooks available. So if you aren't able to pick up a book, uh, it might be available on the San Mateo County website. Uh, and uh, we also, well, Yale personally has like a website called, not a website, a class called the Science of Wellbeing, which is free. If you do want a certificate, it would be $49, but if you are just interested in the course called the Science of Wellbeing, it is free. It's to help create uh, new routines and mindfulness exercises that can help you promote happiness in your life, which might be really helpful during this coronavirus uh, crisis. So uh, that is available. Um, it is through Coursera. So we also posted the Coursera website. Uh, the Coursera website is a range of websites, not websites, classes available, also ranging in humanities, math, history, engineering, language development, all types of classes. A lot of them are free. Again, you would just search free courses on Coursera and you can access the free courses available and they'll all pop up. Again, if you do want a certificate, um, like if you wanted to put it on a resume or if you wanted to proof that you actually did the course, you can pay for that. But for, you know, personal education, or if you're very interested and you have the time to learn Korean, or you want to learn about the basics of engineering, or anything along those lines, you can access that website and see what's available. Uh, so these are some of the resources we do have. And uh, we hope that uh, these educational resources, as well as all the other resources that we've mentioned are helpful for you during this time. Uh, does anyone have any questions or anything like that? No, I think we're done then. 
I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to put the, these resources together. I really appreciate how holistic it was. You know, it wasn't just about our physical health, but you covered mental health, nutrition, entertainment. So um, I have no doubt that this is going to be super helpful for our students. We're going to be sharing out uh, your resource list to different programs and post it on our website as well, along with this video. So thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it.